some meal ideas. We got some really fresh ingredients that we picked from the Living Well Garden, which is awesome. So we're really excited about that. And really the, the Mediterranean diet, like where did it come from, right? Hey. So it came from um, this area of the world where we know that people are eating healthy and having less chronic illness. And it's the traditional um, eating habits in these 16 countries bordering the Mediterranean Sea. The eating styles vary from these countries and regions within each country because of the differences in culture, religion, agricultural production, the economy, geography. However, there are a lot of common factors. And that's what's kind of making up the term Mediterranean diet and lifestyle. So they're based on plant-based foods, such as whole grains, vegetables, legumes, fruits and nuts, seeds, herbs and spices, and healthy fats like olive oil and peanut butter. The Mediterranean not only includes foods, but it also incorporates a healthy lifestyle. We talk about that a lot. Yeah. Um, just making sure that you're getting physical activity, you're um, having social gatherings where you're eating together. That's all an important part of the Mediterranean diet and lifestyle. So just as a review, Nancy, what is the Mediterranean yeah. diet? So the Mediterranean diet is based on plant-based uh, foods and whole foods. Um, you want to incorporate lean proteins such as chicken, turkey, fish, um, tofu, soy are the preferred sources, while red meats are supposed to be limited and rarely consumed. Um, whole grains such as brown rice and whole wheat breads are consumed instead of white breads. Um, pastas do more of a whole grain pasta and a whole grain or brown rice. Um, you, unsaturated fats are consumed with the main one being olive oil. That's our oil of choice. Um, but there are some others that you can use that are unsaturated, such as canola oil, which I do feel pretty highly processed. So I, I still, I just, my go-to is olive oil, but some vegetable oils, peanut oil, sunflower oil, and avocado oil is a good one too. Um, saturated fats are not recommended, such as butter, um, margarine, lard, and coconut oil. And coconut oil, sometimes people think is such a healthy oil, but it is a saturated fat. So I know we see it in the newspaper, it's good for your hair and skin, but for cooking, we um, don't recommend that. And then moderate amounts of cheese and yogurt are recommended. Try to get the low fat and then using low fat versions of these as well. Um, limited amounts of sugars and sweets are recommended, such as cakes, soda, cookies. Those are more empty calorie foods. So for once in a while, if there's a birthday, but as an everyday thing, we do try to avoid and look for unsweetened beverages. Um, the Mediterranean diet also includes antioxidant foods such as turmeric, cinnamon, olive oils, and omega-3 fatty acids, and blueberries. This is an overall healthy way of eating as well. So I just wanted to share, so like last night, you know, I was making an easy dinner. I took a kind of a stock pot, I put just a light drizzle of olive oil, and I had some chopped up red onion and garlic, and let that saute. And then I cut up a bunch of like broccoli, cauliflower, red pepper, carrots, um, and threw that in, and I put a little uh, unsalted broth in there, just to, or stock, just to add some moisture and put a lid on it. And then I prepared the brown rice, added that, added an egg, and then some low sodium soy sauce. And then I had some leftover chicken from a rotisserie chicken the night before that we used in a salad, and I threw the remains in there. And I felt like it, you got a lot of vegetables, you got protein, you got the whole grains. And I just wanted to say, this is how simple an example of a Mediterranean meal can be. And I also liked it as I made extra. So throughout the week, I can use it for my lunches as a leftover. Well, you're really getting a, a variety of vegetables and eating yeah. from the rainbow, which is what we recommend. So that, yeah. that's awesome. Sometimes when you, you know, in a salad, they're great, but you do get filled up from all the raw vegetables. But when they're cooked and softened a little, they're just a little bit more easy to chew up and enjoy so yeah those um in treatment might need something like that that's a little bit yeah. softer and easier to tolerate yeah and you don't always have to cook the brown rice from scratch you can get it in those pouches pre-made it's just brown rice or sometimes you can get it frozen in packages i know trader joe's has that so you could take some shortcuts or if you made a big batch of brown rice you can let it cool and then divide it into freezer bags and put it in your freezer so it's accessible. So it doesn't mean that everything's from scratch right then and there. It is from scratch, but you took some pre-prep to get it ready to go. So 
anyhow, it was easy and um, it was good. Yeah, so, it sounds delicious. Yeah. <laughs> so, Mary, what are the benefits of the Mediterranean diet? Yeah, there's so many benefits. We know that it reduces the risk of heart disease. It's got those anti-inflammatory properties to decrease that chronic inflammation. Maintaining a healthy weight, you know, that eating those vegetables, like you said, helps keep us full. Lowering the risk of certain types of cancer. It helps support a healthy gut, which we're learning so right. much about now. Whole which is, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, lowering the risk of metabolic syndrome. So back to that healthy weight. So the Mediterranean diet has these benefits because it limits saturated fats, it omits those trans fats, and includes unsaturated fats, limits sodium, because we want to kind of limit sugar and yeah. added sugar and sodium, refines, um, limits those refined carbohydrates, and it favors foods that are rich in antioxidants and high in fiber. So consuming large amounts of the saturated and trans fats can increase the risk of cardiovascular disease. And I think we've, we've seen that online. We, we know that already. Um, those saturated fats are the LDLs or the bad cholesterol, um, those are the ones that can have that plaque build up in your arteries, and then it's harder for your heart to push that blood through. The unsaturated fats decrease that inflammation and support the HDL or the good cholesterol, um, and that also supports brain health. And we all need to know now that people are living longer, we need to really be taking care of our brain health. Um, so we know that also a diet high in sodium can raise your blood pressure and that increases risk of heart attack or stroke or, as well. So the foods, um, we want to kind of avoid those and avoid the processed foods. Yeah. The processed foods are going to be much higher in sodium. That's really the crux of the Mediterranean diet is getting away from processed foods and trying to buy more whole vegetables and whole foods. And then you do the preparations. And it's shopping the outer perimeter of the store where you're doing the produce, the fresh meats, the low-fat dairy, and the whole grains. Um, and it, it just simplifies it. Well, and when you're eating those whole foods, you have less of those refined carbohydrates that cause your blood sugar to spike. The refined carbs also give you empty calories, which means they have calories without any nutritional benefits. Yeah, it's up so, and down the aisles where you get the high sodium snack food. Exactly. Right. That seem to pop out at you when you're grocery shopping. So we always say, go, don't go hungry. Yeah. yeah. The foods high in fiber and high in antioxidants help reduce that inflammation throughout the body. And the fiber helps keep the waste moving through the large intestine, as well as we know that the antioxidants protect against certain cancers. So a lot of people will say to us, how can I start the Mediterranean diet? Or they're nervous, like, oh, I, I can't do the Mediterranean diet. But really, it's yeah. easy to start, right? Oh, yeah. 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 And I, I think, too, is, you know, going through your pantry, going through your refrigerator and freezer and get rid of things that shouldn't really be in there. Or you're like, no, if I'm starting to do the Mediterranean, this doesn't belong here. And or it just starts slow. Yeah. Like adding one serving of vegetable a day. Yeah. Yeah. So some jumpstart changes you can make to your eating habits is to start following the Mediterranean diet are to switch to olive oil instead of butter, eating fruits and vegetables, and they're so good right now with the summer produce, um, have that as a snack instead of chips or cookies. Yeah, I just bought some peaches and they're so beautiful. And so even like- They're so sweet. Yeah, like last night after dinner, I'm like, hmm, I would like something sweet. And then I'm like, oh, I've got those beautiful peaches. So just cut it up and that did it right there. It gave you that sweetness. Um, choosing whole grain products. And like we're doing a whole grain pasta. When you start using that, it tastes the same. And here you made a positive change. Or when you select bread, look for something that the first ingredient's whole, like whole grain. Um, and it's just, it tastes so good. I feel like people used to think that the whole grain didn't taste very good. Yeah. And now there are a lot more varieties mm -hmm. where they are tasting better. Yeah. Um, and another thing you could try is doing half whole grain and half of the regular pasta yeah. to kind of yeah. wean yourself into it. Yeah, so you're getting away from the refined products. Also substitute a fish meal for red meat at least twice per week and switch to skim or non-fat dairy instead of whole milk. Um, I know like some people just really love their red meat and, but if you start like decreasing the amount in a recipe, so like if you made a stir fry and you had a lot of vegetables and you want to add some steak, you just get a small portion of steak and cut it thin, smaller pieces and incorporate it. You get that flavor 
um, but you've also you're not eating a big portion of it. Or if you're cooking on the grill, do like a shish kebab and put a couple pieces of meat, but mostly vegetables. And you'll be surprised that it wasn't such a hard or big change, you know. Um, so doing like a compromise is what's good. Um, yeah, so making the small changes every week at a slow pace can make a big difference and help you follow the Mediterranean diet long term. If you make all these big changes at once, it might be difficult. You might not get the family support, um, but, you know, it takes time. A simple way to remember the foods is the plate method. Make half of your plate vegetables and fruit, one quarter whole grains, and the other quarter a protein source, whether it's vegetable protein or, you know, meats. Um, so it looks different. Your entree is not the meat now, it's more of a side dish, and then you've got more of your vegetables. And then as an example, um, would be like a broccoli and tomatoes on half the plate, a portion of whole grain pasta, and then one quarter of the plate, maybe grilled chicken or salmon. I think we used to think of the um, spaghetti filling the plate with the meat sauce on top yeah. <laughs> and having a tiny side salad. And now what we want is having a bigger salad and a smaller yeah. portion, like maybe a CD size, if you know what a CD yeah. is. <laughs> yeah, so even what we're doing today, some of the recipes, uh, we're doing some meatless ones, mm -hmm. but um, it does incorporate like tomatoes and garlic roasting in a pan, adding it to your pasta, you know, and, and then more vegetables, and you're like, I didn't even miss the meat part, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, but some meat is okay. So what are some tips, Mary, um, for planning um, meals on the Mediterranean diet? Yeah, I think, you know, it's easy to plan. Um, it's easier if you plan ahead a little bit. That's really helpful because then um, you maybe can cook ahead, but if you start to plan like your breakfast and lunch menu items, then rotate them during the week, that can be really helpful. Um, you can also add in protein foods such as Greek yogurt, nuts um, on oatmeal, peanut butter, or eggs on toast, and build main entrees, like Nancy said, around vegetables. So um, incorporating the whole grains and legumes instead of meats. Um, so you could use lentils or chickpeas and have kind of a plant-based meal. And when you do eat meat, focus on choices such as a skinless chicken or having fish such as salmon and save the red meats for once a week or twice a month. Um, and then just kind of add variety by adding new recipes or foods um, from online websites and also um, living well. There's a whole nutrition section there where we have so many recipes that we've been cooking for the past several years. Um, there's also uh, the Living Well YouTube channel that has a lot of our videos and um, some, you know, kind of quick and easy tips. So kind of demystify some of the recipes. They um, we're trying to make them easy so that people can do them quickly. Also, just vegetable proteins like your beans and the nuts, even sprinkling on like a stir fry or even a salad will give you some extra protein too. And then using eggs, you know, mm -hmm. also. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's many ways to get protein. Yeah. So another tip can be to make um, leftovers. So you use your leftovers, you make two meals. So maybe, maybe you're making chicken and rice um, for a Monday night. And then um, you have your roasted vegetables on the side and then Tuesday, maybe you're going to have like a burrito bowl where you have the vegetables, you have a little rice, you have chicken, or maybe you do chickpeas that night. Um, and then you can do chicken later in the week. So planning ahead, cooking in larger quantities and freezing, freezing small portions for later. And then always just remember to label the container. Yeah, yeah. yeah you got to make sure to date it, especially um, in treatment, just to make sure that yeah. it's not staying in your freezer too long. And what it is, because sometimes frozen foods take on a look and you're like, what is this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. Um, you want to plan nutritious snacks too, like fresh or dried fruit, raw vegetables, whole grain crackers, low fat cheese, even low fat yogurt. Greek yogurt is especially helpful mm -hmm. because it's giving you almost double the amount of protein. And then cooking with olive oil and using it in homemade salad dressings, it doesn't have to be super complicated. Um, and, you know, you can even roast your vegetables ahead. You can pan sear fish, which is quick and easy. Um, you know, just remember, we talked about a little bit earlier about eating foods from the rainbow, meaning eating a variety of foods from different colors, like 
beets and spinach and blueberries and oranges and tomatoes and bananas, all of those colorful groups have different nutrients that they're going to provide. The meal planning for the entire week can help you stick to those meals and you can write them down and then post them on the fridge or keep it by your phone. I like to kind of pick four meals, yeah, Monday through Thursday, and then over the weekend, you can either have leftovers or, you know, some people may go out occasionally. Um, but I think it's, um, you know, if you, you don't have to plan seven days of every no. meal you're eating, right? Your life isn't like that. You might get an invitation to go out to dinner. And you're like, oh, sure, you know. Right, so, right. Or yeah. you make a recipe that lasts for a few nights. Yeah. And then, you know, you want to take a break and, and do something different. So you know what I like to do when I eat is I like to eat half. And I ask for the container right away. Even if it's a salad, I don't dress it until I put that half in a container. Because it gives me another meal, and I don't like to have that overfull feeling going home. So it's just a habit I've gotten into, and um, it's fun. You know, it's good. You have something tasty already prepared, right? Yeah. For the next day. It's going to take some time. Yeah. Well, I think that that's cost effective too, right? How how can we make it cost effective to be on the Mediterranean yeah. diet? But also, I want to preface too is that if you are doing that, then you go straight home afterwards. You don't want to leave it in a hot car. Because then it's a whole nother, it could be a big problem. So, yeah. Good, yeah. good point. Yeah. yeah. Especially today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what about the cost of the sure, yeah. Mediterranean diet? So sometimes people feel like, is the Mediterranean going to cost me more? And, you know, food cost is going up. So we're really careful about, you know, not overbuying your produce and, you know, perishable foods. Kind of, you do have a little bit of a plan, even like free meals for that week and then get your ingredients, but then stay on top of it. Like don't like one night be like, oh, I don't feel like cooking. Let's just make a frozen pizza. Then, you know, it might push those ingredients back and you're still in the refrigerator and then they go bad and you have to get rid of them. So um, Mediterranean diet foods are whole foods that are available in any supermarket. And while some of these foods might cost more than a fast food meal, they're packed with nutrients for your body. So you wanna keep that in mind that that's the benefit of why you're doing this. And in the short term, it may cost a little more to buy more nutritious foods. However, in the long term, if you're following the Mediterranean diet, you reduce the risk of many diseases, like Mary was saying, heart disease and the Alzheimer's. It's, you know, it's just um, really has some great benefits, um, which in turn will cost you less trips to the physician's office and medical bills and medications. But there are many ways to save as well with coupons, buying produce in season, looking for sales at the grocery store, um, even food pantries have some fresh produce. But also I wanna say, when you do, like we were saying, shop the outer perimeter, you stick to that plan. You know, it's when you go up and down the aisles, those bags of chips and boxes of crackers, that is expensive. And I think if you compare, you know, a part of food with all that in there versus more like your produce and your fresh meats and, I think you're gonna save money in the long run. So, and plus if you're cutting down on meats, those are expensive. And if now you're using half, that means you still have another half for another meal. You've gotten two meals out of it. So I don't believe that it's more expensive. I really don't. I some, Or sometimes choose the store, like something like in Aldi's where you can get some really good produce and you're not paying some of the other store prices. So you do have to kind of shop and compare and be, cognizant of what's out there um, and make your choices. Well, and if you can eat um, seasonally, so eating mm -hmm. the foods that are available in the season, they're going to be more nutritious. You're going to have less of a cost because they're traveling less. So that's all a good and point too. all the ads too, you know, like, you know, on Wednesdays, I think it is the produce ads come and you can compare like, what are the red deals? I think they call it for certain <laughs> stores and Kind of plan your meals around that so um it's a challenge but i i think it's very doable and you don't have to get organic foods you know we say we'd rather you eat vegetables than trying to just eat organic it's kind of like use your senses your eyes your nose your touch and see what looks good and go that way uh, rather than trying to be really narrow with you know organic foods we would rather you eat more vegetables and fruit and then just wash them and, and do everything um, 
keep you fed. And even consider grilling. Growing oh, food. yeah. Growing your food, it's, um, that's yeah. also good, too. As Mary mentioned, we do have a wonderful garden here at Livingwell, and we utilize it a lot, um, especially the herbs, too, because herbs can be so expensive in the store. But we love using herbs because you can reduce the sodium content of your food. And we throw it in practically everything, like salads, and it's amazing the flavors that you get from experimenting, especially mint. You might think mint in tea or beverage, but when you throw it into a salad, it's like, wow. Really fresh. That yeah. 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 So, um, Mary, um, <laughs> how do you suggest shopping for the Mediterranean diet? Yeah, we talked a little bit about looking for sales, coupons, buying bulk items. That's another good idea where you buy, you know, a big bunch of broccoli. A lot of times, um, if you're living on your own or there's just one or two people in the home, you might not even be able to eat a whole bunch of broccoli before it goes bad. But we do suggest, um, like if you're buying lettuce and broccoli, maybe and squash, you eat the lettuce first and then the broccoli and then the squash because those will last longer in your pantry. But also, you can freeze um, broccoli. You can freeze yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. making sure that you're, um, you know, kind of taking advantage of that and, and chopping it up and throwing it in the freezer. You can shop for nuts, legumes, and grains in um, uh, bigger quantities, too, and even getting the dried versions. Yeah, and I'm kind of funny about grains and nuts in big quantity, only because... Not in the bulk area. Yeah. But you can buy a bag, and that'll last you a lot longer if yeah. you put it in the crock pot. Because I yeah. just don't like things going bad. You know, like that rancid odor. Like Oh, you mean vegetables in general? No, yeah. I'm talking about nuts and grains. Like You it, should put them in the freezer. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so kind of look for sales and, um, you know, just kind of check. Cooking beans can help cut the cost down as well, just like we talked about. Mm -hmm. um, buying canned fish, such as salmon, tuna, sardines. Um, those are a budget-friendly, great way to get protein and healthy fats, calcium, vitamin D, if you're eating that whole sardine. <laughs> um, the beans and legumes, such as chickpeas, lentils, black beans, are inexpensive. And combined with rice, they're a complete protein or an, another grain. And then purchasing frozen vegetables, a lot of people think those might not be as healthy, but really they're taking them straight from the crop and flash freezing them now. So they really do have a lot of good nutrition and good nutritional benefits. So, so that's important. And then, you know, just kind of pasta dishes are another way that you can have an inexpensive um, meal incorporating chicken, beans, zucchini, spinach, tomatoes, kind of like mm -hmm. today. <laughs> um, and yeah, just look at those whole grain options. So, is the Mediterranean diet only recommended for certain people or certain groups of people? Yeah, um, well, the Mediterranean diet is recommended for all people. Everybody can reap the benefit. You know, like you do have to look in terms of if you had like GI surgery or there's certain conditions where you'd have to limit your fiber. That's an exception to that rule. But the rate like the Mediterranean diet is one of the number one ways of eating because it is so healthy and it's it's just out there. Like it's it's normal foods and it's easy to follow when you break it down into simple meals. Um, but it's, it is not targeted for a specific group of people. All healthy people should ideally follow the Mediterranean way of eating as it includes many health benefits and reduces the risk of certain diseases that Mary had talked about. Um, and we recommend the med Mediterranean diet for people who are have cancer um, is just kind of the diet of choice um, because you're getting really good um, anti-inflammatory foods and a lot of nutrition from food itself rather than relying on supplements. Um, and, you know, if you do have um, inflammation that can cause some symptoms, so you have, you have to have the symptoms under control, the diet can help keep those under control. The Mediterranean diet is recommended for people with health conditions such as diabetes and heart disease. Um, because it is low in refined carbohydrates and added sugars and includes healthy fats um, and limits unhealthy fat. And as always, talk to your doctor before you, you know, start something like this. Um, but everyone's their own individual and you know what your health concerns are. So that's what the dietitian can do to help you kind of tweak things to make it work for you. Yeah, and if you do have questions, um, you can always reach out to Living Well. They can um, if you're at the cancer centers, 
Um, certainly there are dietitians there that can help you in like Northwestern, but if you're outside of Northwestern, then um, you can reach out to Living Well and um, or take advantage of our classes. And that's yeah, right. that's right. Yeah. yeah, we'll talk more about that. What's yeah, thing too. Yeah, yeah. That's what we're here for: is to spread the word on nutrition and just help help you manage your weight and your health, you know, through diet. And mm -hmm. yeah. So we can also talk about um, whether or not it could be vegetarian. Um, the Mediterranean diet can be vegan or vegetarian, like we've kind of mentioned about black beans and rice, for example, um, or whatever kinds of beans and rice. Um, the vegetarians would be able to fully eliminate animal-based proteins and still follow the Mediterranean diet, and same with vegan, to have it dairy-free. The diet focuses on unsaturated fats that are plant-based as well. And the modification can certainly fit into what they're, they're doing. Um, so we just want to make sure that you're checking the label and getting other non-dairy sources of calcium, vitamin D, and protein. And then for the vegans, we usually just check to make sure that they talk with their doctor about vitamin B12. And then um, such things as oat milk, almond milk, and soy-based products can be found to give you fortified nutrients. And really a lot of times some of the substitute milks like oat milk or almond milk just have a little bit less protein. So soy um, soy milk might be, so it has about seven grams per eight ounces where as dairy has eight grams per eight mm -hmm. ounces of milk. And then the almond or oat milk sometimes have one to two. You know, like the Mediterranean way of eating is more plant-based. But it doesn't mean that it's vegetarian. You know, we do incorporate some poultry and fish and occasionally some red meat. Some cancers have to really be more restrictive with red meat, such as colon and rectal cancers. But like a breast cancer diagnosis, you can have it a little bit more often. Um, but I just wanted to clarify, it's not a vegetarian diet that we do include some animal type sources, but then we promote the beans and legumes and right, yeah. So making in some plant based yeah. options, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's a really healthy way of eating. So, does this mean that we have to cook every meal from scratch? Yes, <laughs> no, no, no. Um, you know, we do promote cooking in the home because you do have more control over what you're putting into your food, you tend to eat healthier and you save money that way. Um, and you can control your sodium intake too when you're doing your own cooking. Um, but we do believe that, you know, food is personal and it's enjoyable and it's social. And so we want you to still enjoy your eating, but over time, you know, tweaking your food habits um, and little by little, if sweets are a big thing for you, then find alternative ways to get sweet, like through fruit in your diet or getting away from fried food. And then the big thing is getting away from processed food, um, which are boxes of different things that have a, an ingredient panel. Um, but yeah, you can still eat out in restaurants. Um, sometimes like looking ahead to a menu, if you know where you're going, look ahead so you can kind of see what your choices are. Um, I know that recently my daughter and I, well, as a group, we went out, my family, and my daughter and I split a couple of things. And it was so fun because we each got to try something and it was very healthy and loved it that way. Um, so it, it might be easier for you to start to follow the Mediterranean way of eating at home until you get used to the routine. And then it can be less stressful when you go out to have a plan of what you're looking for on the menu. Um, but if you happen to eat out during an occasion, like you went to a barbecue or family gathering, you know, do what you can, do what's best. You know, it's not a perfect world. Um, you know, it's livable and can have a little bit of stuff, but get back on the plan, you know, the next day is always good. Um, and just, you know, you can try to choose like a vegetarian entree um, when you eat out, if it's available and sounds good to you. Um, yeah. That's a good way to try something new too. I, I know yeah. a lot of people are a little nervous about fish. So when you go out, that'd be a good way to try to sneak in those two servings, get fish when you're yeah. eating out and they'll give you an idea. We have some recipes at Living Well that would yeah. um, help with that too. But it's not a bad idea to have something you're not used to having yeah. when you go out. Or if you're not used to it'll you give you a really idea. Prepare fish, then 
have it when you eat out. Like you can have two servings a week, and it could be tuna salad too. You can count, but it's true. Do something that you're not as familiar with. Um, try in a restaurant too. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so work in progress. Yeah. Okay. So Mary, how much food should a person eat in a day on a Mediterranean diet? Yeah, we do get this a lot, like what kind of quantities and what should my portions be? And there's really not a set amount of food that's required for the Mediterranean diet. Everyone's calorie and protein needs are different depending on age, gender, medical history. So speak with your doctor and your dietitian to figure out um, what the calories are appropriate for you. And then um, they can help you determine like a specific goal, if it's maintaining weight or um, losing weight or gaining weight. Um, there are also apps online, like My Fitness Pal is one that's really popular. It's free. It's an easy way to kind of um, keep track, even if you did it for just two or three days, to kind of see where you were and have kind of a barometer. Um, it'll kind of tell you about carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. And so that's a good idea to help guide you in the right direction. Um, but the important thing is to make sure you're getting the, the nutrients that your body needs with um, every meal and trying to plug in those fruits and vegetables when possible, getting the whole grains, but making sure you're getting enough protein too. And what we do notice a lot of people are not getting enough protein, um, especially over age 65. You need a lot more protein than we originally thought. Well, I was gonna say too is um, don't be afraid to monitor your weight at home because sometimes that's just a real simple way is a couple times a week jump on the scale and just to check in that you're maintaining so that you know that what you're eating in a day is enough or adequate to maintain your weight. And if you're trying to lose weight, look at some of your food choices. And the first thing off the bat would be, are you eating a lot of empty calories or a lot of fried food? So it's looking at those culprits right there um, and then try to incorporate more fruits and vegetables in your diet because they're lower calorie. Um, because it doesn't hurt to keep tabs on your weight. So it's not a surprise. 10 months later, and you're like, what? You know, <laughs> no one wants that. Well, and I, I think we don't want it to be a chore. No, eating, it's tedious. Yeah, no. eating, eating, you know, if you don't want to count calories or that's great. Yeah. You know, just start slow and make those small changes. And um, hopefully today we'll give you some more ideas. We have some um, recipe ideas that we're going to talk about now just for some different meals. And then please check out the website. And then we're going to do a couple of food demos. So. What are what what can we start with for breakfast, for example? Yeah, so eggs are such a great source of protein and they're so versatile. Um, so like just making like an omelet or even scrambled eggs and adding vegetables in. So like tomatoes, cucumber, avocado, um, red peppers are easy ways to do it. I've seen where people have cut an avocado in half and filled it with some scrambled eggs or I remember we were on vacation and we went for breakfast and we were in Florida. And so they had a bed of romaine lettuce with a big tomato and then scrambled eggs on top and slices of avocado. And I was like, it was so good. And I'm but beautiful. different. It's very yeah. colorful. Yeah. yeah. And it felt summery, even yeah. though it was winter, you know, <laughs> they had nicer weather. Um, but then also like a spinach and egg scramble. Um, and you can have a side dish of raspberries. Um, I like how you incorporated egg in the um, rice dish with the vegetables. Oh, yeah. We talked about. Yeah, because yeah, it kind of held things together. Mm -hmm. And but, it's okay to have leftovers for breakfast. Yeah, I'm a big fan of quiche, too. Like, making it yourself where you can control, like, doing skim milk and do your eggs and then some cheese and then incorporating like spinach. I've made some where it's cauliflower mm -hmm. um, and zucchini. Like yeah. find different it's zucchini season now, so that's yeah. good. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah. okay. <laughs> and then lunch, um, you know, bowls are really popular where you start with a bowl, a regular bowl, and then you put your raw vegetables in. So you could do like a cauliflower rice in a bowl add some grilled chicken, but then you enhance it with some chopped up red onion and some fresh dill, cooked chicken, um, lemon juice, oregano, cherry tomatoes, cucumber, calamato. It's almost like making a sundae, but you're using vegetables and they're so fun. I've done it where I've taken a pork tenderloin and put it in a crock pot all day and then started with the bed of lettuce and some red cabbage and, you know, da da da, and then add the meat and it's I easy. love roasted chickpeas too. Yeah. In a bowl, that that's a really great plant-based yeah. protein you can add in. And then even doing like a wrap with a whole wheat tortilla, and then adding some 
avocado spread down there and then adding vegetables. So it, it's just kind of fun. There's some great cookbooks out there. Um, I especially like Skinny Taste is a good one. Um, we're both, we love our cookbook. <laughs> we forest beast. I mean, there's so many, but yeah. go to the stores, a bookstore, and just thumb through and see if what's popping out at you. And I always have felt like if you can get five good recipes out of a cookbook, it's a good one. Um, but then there's so many recipes online too that you can just pop that idea in and search. And kind of look and see if there are any vegetables in there. Yeah. You know, look for the recipes that have, you know, increased vegetables or occasional plant-based protein. That's really helpful too. Some dinner ideas are, you know, trying like a roasted squash with lentils. It doesn't necessarily have to have meat in it. Mm -hmm. um, butternut squash with like olive oil and paprika and garlic. Um, chopped parsley, even like a little goat cheese. That would be so delicious. Um, we're getting into squash season, so we're crazy about squash. Definitely, um, definitely excited about that. And um, one of our favorites is delicata squash. Yeah. So we'll be doing some of that soon, I'm sure. I just want to interject too. Like when you see a recipe and you're like, oh, it's got such and such in it. You got to own the recipe. You can tweak it however you want. Like take that vegetable out and put something else in and make it your own. It's totally acceptable. We do it all the time. Same with spices, yeah. really. You know, you can substitute a lot of different things. So mm -hmm. you can experiment. Especially if you don't have it on hand, you're like, oh, what else could I put in here? Exactly. Yeah. And right now, not everything is always available. Yeah. Um, I love these sheet pan meals too, The um, where you have like, you can bake shrimp and do your veggies and make it colorful, like asparagus and cherry tomatoes and red onions and, um, you know, roasting just with a little bit of olive oil, you can do kind of a variety and it just looks so beautiful. We'll show you some. But the secret is ones. use parchment paper <laughs> because you don't want to wreck your pans with vegetables sticking to it. Put a piece of parchment paper down and then add your vegetables that have been tossed with lightly with olive oil and spread it out. Mm -hmm. But you have to be careful when you use parchment paper. If you're doing like 450 degrees to roast the vegetables, don't have it too close to the heat source because mm -hmm. the paper can catch on fire. So just, you know, watching things, never leave the kitchen with stuff. You know, you've got to keep an eye on things. But the other yeah. thing, I used to think you had to chop everything really finely. Yeah. You can put a big sprig of rosemary from your garden or from the grocery store and just put it right in the middle of the vegetables and the flavors will yeah. um, go through the vegetables. You don't have to chop or anything. You just throw it right on top. So just kind of keep mm -hmm. that in mind. Um, snacks are a good way too to get some um, like a peanut butter sesame seed ball. We have several of those kinds of things on the Living Well website. Um, we talked about an avocado stuffed with tuna, yeah. egg salad. Those are always good too. So um, yeah. So now with tomato season, I'm just using tomatoes in almost everything because we can't get enough of them because that season will end fairly soon. So. Yeah, so um, I understand we have some questions. Two questions. Uh, the first one is, how is canola oil as, how can you see canola as more processed than extra virgin olive oil, given that extra virgin olive oil can sometimes be super processed or added to? So maybe give them tips. You do a great job of giving tips of what to look for okay. with the upstream because sometimes they have additives. Yeah, so that's a very good question. We are big fans of using olive oil. But if you just walked into a store and saw olive oil at a cheaper price, and you know, oh, I got a good deal here. You got to look at the ingredients because sometimes olive oil is mixed with like soybean oil and other less favorable oils. So you want to check to make sure you're getting 100% extra virgin olive oil. And like I said, I use it for everything um, because I'm not deep frying foods. I might saute something. I'm not worried about the smoke point because it's not going to be that high. So I just use it for everything. Um, canola oil is on the Mediterranean diet, but I feel like it's considered a little bit more highly processed. So if I had a choice, I would always just go with olive oil. And I use it sparingly. I'm not pouring a lot of olive oil into something. A you know, big container lasts me a long time. And I feel like, I don't know if I want to use brands, but Costco has a really good olive oil that's um, pretty pure. So getting one of that size is a decent price and it'll last you. Yeah. If you have too many oils on hand and you start using others, they can go bad. And then you're into that situation where you're throwing oils out. Use your nose. 
to check sometimes because that smell is pretty um yeah you know what it is so this way olive oil that's all we keep here i, I like the idea of um costco or even sam's club or yeah. aldi yeah. you don't even have to have a membership right. where yeah. you're able to get foods that are a little bit more reasonable especially mm -hmm. a, a staple like that that you're going to be using yeah. a lot yeah it's a good question we also had a question about if potatoes are on the mediterranean side. Yeah. <laughs> But you know what I do now? I, if the little tiny ones are available, I try to use those. I'm not eating big whole ones, but I like that if I'm roasting vegetables, I'll cut them in half and incorporate them with others. I've got that Irish in me, so a potato is like a favorite food. Uh, or sweet potatoes are one. Uh, but I was just going to say, I like using sweet potatoes. Yeah. They're really pretty color. We know that it's giving us that good vitamin A for night vision. Um, but if you use the potato in a smaller amount with your peppers and your onions and your zucchini, then you're not going to be getting that really high carb meal, yes. but you're going to be getting a little bit of sweetness and the color is helpful because it helps with that eating from the rainbow. So just incorporate them in small amounts, but yeah. definitely include them because they do yeah. add. And we do need some carbohydrates in our diet. We use up that for energy. So we don't want to go completely um, without them because we need those for our quick energy. And there's two types of carbohydrate. There's complex and simple. It's the simple that we're trying to get away from. And that's the sugary drinks and you know, sweets, um, that's what we're trying to get away from, but complex give us a lot of good health benefits. It's dairy, vegetables, fruit, and whole grains are complex, and we need it for our brain, and it gives us some satiety too. Like that's why when I was talking about that fried, it's not really fried because it's very little oil, but the rice, um, that extra whole grain brown rice gives you that feeling of fullness, mm -hmm. but you also got a lot of vegetables and things like that. So. I think we do need to have the protein, the fats and the carbs at every meal. Yeah. And that does give you all of those nutrients. So the satiety from the fat, the protein yeah. is kind of used as a, an energy source after the carbs. And for digestive health too. You right. need those whole grains to help your system. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, we will move on to the cooking demos. Mary's going to start first and yeah. then I'll follow. So, All right. so we're going to walk okay. over. And yeah. <laughs> It's amazing getting us all set up with everything that we need. And today I am going to be starting out with um, a zucchini zoodle dish with spinach. And we're going to just dump the, I've got some olive oil and garlic that I started sauteing. And I turned on my burner here and turned on the back burner. Now I'm turning on the right burner. Um, so we're going to just heat that up and Wilt the spinach just a little bit because it's kind of a warm zucchini spinach salad. And I love the colors of this spinach. And I think a lot of times we feel like, well, what, how can you use spinach? And it looks like a lot, but it wilts down pretty quickly. And so I just have that in there with the olive oil and the garlic. And um, we're just going to let that kind of. Um, you can see how it kind of fills the pan right now, but it's going to wilt down shortly. It doesn't take too long. It's already starting to kind of wilt a little bit. And, you know, that's an easy way to use spinach is just to wilt it. Um, and then you can add it to a wrap or you can add it to even a salad with romaine or you can add it to pasta. So, you know, don't forget to use your spinach. And if you just saute it with a little olive oil and garlic, you get some really good flavor. So you can already see that it's um, uh, really wilting down and kind of has a lot less mass to it. So while that's cooking, I wanted to show you um, a zucchini noodle salad. And this is a zucchini zoodler. <laughs> a noodler. <laughs> um, so you just want to make sure that uh, you have it set up right. And this is different from my one at home. So I actually looked at a YouTube video <laughs> to make sure that it was working properly. So um, this particular one has a little suction cup on the end. 
And then you want to make sure that the zucchini is there's a little um, piece that sticks out that keeps the zucchini in place here. And then these little spheres keep it in place there. And then you kind of fold it down here, but the bottom part is suctioned down. And then you can see that it just um, kind of makes these little kind of little circles. And instead of using pasta, if you want to go lower carb and sneak in your vegetables, you can just use a zucchini and kind of make your noodles. And it gives a really interesting texture and um you know a good flavor so you can see it comes out pretty easily and then i'm gonna kind of mix this with my spinach but i love the color and the texture too it's just really amazing how um easy that is to use so the spinach is really cooking down now so i'm going to turn down the heat a little bit but you can kind of see the garlic. And I got baby spinach. I like how it's a little bit more tender. Um, it's a little bit easier to create the stem starting to stick and you can just kind of lump it in. So kind of keep that in mind. So once we have the zucchini noodles here, um, I'm going to pour it in a bigger bowl. And then we're going to just add some pesto to these um, zucchini noodles to kind of give them a little bit of oomph. Um, before we combine it with the spinach. The spinach is gonna have some good flavor with that garlic. And then we're just gonna kind of give these zucchini noodles a little bit of that basil, a little bit of the parmesan, a little olive oil, and that's gonna give them some really nice flavor. And they already have that really good texture, which I love. Um, so kind of just incorporate that together. Make sure you're covering all the zucchini there. And then you can already see that it's separating a little bit. It's going to taste really fresh. And all right, so uh, we're going to kind of make, make this kind of like a hot salad, like I said. So before we um, finish up, we're going to add the zucchini noodles right to the spinach. And then we're just going to add a little bit of, we've got some fresh rosemary from the garden. And so I love that we're just able to chop that up fresh. And rosemary, you want to chop it up kind of small and you want to take the big heavy stems off because they're a little bit tough. So just make sure that you're chopping that up small. And then we're going to add that fresh rosemary to our dish here. And it looks so good. And I'm going to give it a little toss with the spinach. It's going to be amazing. You can see already it's got some beautiful color and texture. And then we've got a little bit of thyme here, which is just um, add some further dimension to it. And then I'm going to give that another stir. And now, if you look at the spinach, um, it's almost disappeared. So you've really got like the it's kind of hiding in the bottom, but it'll give it a nice texture and um, good flavor there. So I think it I love the I love the way that's coming together. So the other thing that I did was roasted some yummy cherry tomatoes and some chicken sausage. Now this is a Mediterranean chicken sausage. Um, um, yeah. <laughs> um, so we're just going to add that in. You don't really have to. Um, we're going to add some Parmesan too. So you could have this as a side dish, but I was thinking that's more of like a main course. The chicken sausage comes in just a little package and I cut it up um, diagonally. Thank you, Nancy. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I roasted the, thank you. I roasted the tomatoes so they get this like, caramelized, you know, yummy taste. And then I like to do the chicken sausage in like little diagonal cuts so that it kind of gives you um, just a nice texture. So we're going to incorporate that all together. And then, oh my gosh, it's looking so pretty. All the colors are wonderful. I love that. 
That looks amazing. And then um, just to top it off, to finish it off here, we're going to take our basil and just do a little chiffonade where we incorporate all of these leaves together and just kind of roll them up and then zice. I'm going to take this part off because it's got the stem there. Just give it a nice little dice. That's going to be our garnish on top. Oh my goodness, it's so beautiful. And then we've got our avocado that we're going to add to it. And I like to just use um, a table knife um, to cut around the avocado. You can take the pit out just with a spoon like this, if you would like, and then you don't have to worry. But I would say always, if you're using a knife with an avocado, keep it on the cutting board and um, just be safe. And then I like to take the knife and just make some cuts to make little squares throughout the avocado. And then use your spoon to scoop it out. And then we'll add that on as our little garnish. Oh my gosh, this looks amazing. I'm gonna just add a little bit of lemon juice to get it some freshness. Citrus is so good as a little topping. And then we're going to just finish it off with some Parmesan cheese. Oh, <laughs> well, all right. So we're going to head right over to Nate now and enjoy. So our next recipe is the Mediterranean roasted vegetable and pasta salad. So this is an example of a whole grain pasta. And when you look at the ingredient panel, it's just whole grain uh, wheat flour. And see that little symbol there? It shows um, that this is a whole grain product. So that the first ingredient is made with a whole grain. So it means that it's um, high in um, whole grains, which is what you're looking for. So I just made it according to directions with water and then I drained it. So this is what it looks like cooked through. I add a little olive oil just so it loosens up. But then I put some in this pot with fresh spinach. And then while it's hot, the spinach will wilt down. And now we're just going to pour it into the bowl and we'll add some of the other ingredients. And the spinach um, really shrinks down nicely. Um, okay, so now we're just going to combine the other ingredients. So in this pan, I just um, poured a little bit of olive oil and some grape tomatoes, a little bit of zucchini was left over, and then um, garlic. And I love doing that and adding it to pasta. So we'll add this next. Notice we're not really adding a sauce to the pasta. We're just using vegetable um, and garlic for the flavor. And then in this um, pan, we roasted vegetables. So we've got red pepper, yellow pepper, carrots, red onion, zucchini. Um, and I just toss it with a little bit of olive oil and then put it in a 450 degree oven and let it roast so it's soft. And then I will carefully edit to this. <laughs> yeah, see that how beautiful the colors are? It's really nice. <laughs> I love the colors. It's just a beautiful rainbow. All right. So now we're going to make a dressing that can go over it. So we're going to use a little bit of olive oil. Um, nice to go. Have a light on the olive oil, so I just pour a little bit in, and then we're gonna squeeze a lemon. So we're just gonna cut the lemon in half, and then use our citrus press, and I always put it where the holes are. I put mm -hmm. it face down, and then squeeze into here. And it's nice to have like a tart. You can either use vinegar or lemon juice to make give it a nice um, flavoring. I'll put a little extra lemon just for that extra kick. And then we're going to add some minced garlic. So you see we're not using the salt. We have pepper, which I'll shake a little on. And I've got some just chosen like herb de fonts just to add some more seasoning. But no salt has been added. And then um, we'll squeeze some that garlic. I like to do it first, it goes a little easier. Um, 
How many quarts do you think? I'll put like four, but again, on the recipe, you can do whatever you'd like um, as far as quantity. And then it does call for some herbs. So I'm going to put this on first, toss it, flavor, brings everything alive with the lemon juice. And then um, this is from our garden, some rosemary. So I'm just going to snip a little um, on here. It's been washed. We've got some fresh basil. I'm just going to snip it instead of cutting it just for convenience. <laughs> So I, I know like some it called for chives and parsley. We didn't have that in our garden, so it's OK. You can make substitutions uh, and it'll still be very good. And then we do have mushrooms, too. So I just I know it said to put the mushrooms on a baking sheet, but I just felt I needed more control over cooking these. So we'll just add the mushrooms. So I just a little olive oil and then the mushrooms. And that's it. I was thinking too, what might be good is some artichoke hearts in here. So that might be something for future to consider adding. So that's it. And we've got a whole bunch of vegetables in here. So it's a warm pasta salad and it's all Mediterranean. Yeah, so there are a few other recipes that we have available to you in the chat. One is a lemon dill salmon, which is wonderful. Um, goes accompanies any of these dishes. And then we also have a sweet potato noodle salad with cabbage and lentils. So that's another very healthy meatless um, recipe. Sweet potatoes, yum. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that roasted salad smells so good with the lemon and the yeah. basil. We, are, we wish we could send you that to oh, the- um... And a little Parmesan to top it off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, you can even substitute feta cheese if you want. It's whatever you would prefer. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I hope that this helped give you some ideas for Mediterranean meals and just keeping it simple is the big thing. Um, and start small, try start these small. recipes. Yeah. Yeah. And um, go from there and enjoy. So, yeah, thanks so much for spending time with us yeah. today. And we'll see you at our next classes. We yeah. have a series of classes coming up in the fall Eating Well and Being Well. They're two different series. Um, we're going to have in person yeah. um, recipe tasting, which we're really excited about. We've been long awaiting that, the in person yeah. since COVID. We've been just doing virtual and we're really glad to get people back in the kitchen. So that's right. Then you'll be able to smell with us. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone. Have a good day. Stay cool in this hot weather.